Okay guys, so welcome back to another Easy EKG uh, video. This video is going to go over 12 lead EKGs. Um, they're really not that more complex compared to a six lead, six lead EKG, but before you watch this video, I want you to watch my other video on the six lead EKGs and make sure you have a good solid foundation uh, to build on because it's crucial that you understand the physiologic properties and how things work in this situation instead of just memorizing it because when you memorize it you're not going to retain it you're not going to understand what's happening when you have ST elevation depression so really just watch my other video focus pay attention and get the concepts and physiologic properties down and then come back and watch this video um, and we'll add on the additional six leads that we have with a 12 lead EKG so um, in my other video we talked about leads one two three ABR ABL and ABF um, they measure the electrical activity seen here on my skeleton from the left or the right shoulder down to the left pelvis. Okay, so they measure the electrical activity in this direction, if that makes sense. The transverse plane this way. So if we were to take a sword or some long measuring device and stick it in the ribs here, it would come out down here. This would be what we're measuring. Okay, with the precordial leads or with the 12 lead, we add on six additional leads. So we have lead V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. These are called the precordial leads, and these actually measure electrical activity from the front to back. So instead of going from the right shoulder to the left hip, we're measuring any electrical activity that's moving from anterior to posterior, or front to back, back to front. Okay, so if we were to take my marker, and slide it in the ribs here, come out in the back, that is the electrical activity that we're measuring. So it's not going to pick up any electrical activity that's going in this direction. It's only going to pick up electrical activity that's going front to back. And likewise, in your leads 1, 2, 3, ABR, ABL, and ABF, they're not going to pick up any electrical activity going front to back. They're only going to pick up electrical activity going from the right shoulder down to the left pelvis or anything in this transverse plane. So, um, what you need to know about these leads here, they're really not that complex. Everybody thinks like, oh, 12 lead, it's so hard to read. Well, it's really not that much more different than reading the 6 lead. The thing you have to first get a grasp of is how the heart is actually placed in the chest. So we have the spine back here with our little spinous process on the ribs. We have our sternum up here. This is the left side, and this is the right side, okay? So right now, our view is we are looking down as if we cut the chest in half and we cut it down the middle just like this. We lifted the head and the top of the chest off and we're looking down into the body, okay? So the heart actually is not um, in the position that one might think. What actually is, or the way it actually looks is the right ventricle is kind of pointed anteriorly and the left ventricle is pointed posteriorly. So if we draw this, this is not in proportion by any means. I'm just drawing it big so you can see it. Move the sternum over here. Okay, so left ventricle is bigger than right ventricle, right? So we have left ventricle, left atrium, right atrium, and right ventricle, okay? So the right ventricle is pointed more anteriorly, or it's on the anterior side of the chest, left ventricle is on the posterior side of the chest. So when we take the precordial leads, they go around the body from, remember, the anterior side of the chest to the posterior. They kind of wrap around. So we would have one of them here. We'd have one on the other side of the sternum. We'd have one here, one over here, and that's four, V5, and V6, okay? So label these here, V1, V2, V3, V4, Five, V six. All right. So when the ventricles depolarize, which depolarizes first, the right or the left ventricle? Well, the right ventricle depolarizes first. So if we know our mean electrical depolarization of the ventricle is this direction, remember, because the ventricles depolarize from the inside out. Um, so we have our depolarization from the SA node goes to the AV node. It comes down through the septum, and then it sends off into the Purkinje fibers and the bundle of Hiss into the right ventricle, and through the left ventricle, through the anterior and posterior branches. So 
our muscle tissue actually, it doesn't just depolarize like this, it actually depolarizes from the inside out. So it, our net depolarization vector is this direction, okay? So if we have our right ventricle depolarizing this way and the left ventricle is depolarizing this way, what are you going to expect to see, or what would you see? So, remember from our first video, let's look at V1. Let me draw V1 up here. So, if we have a depolarization that's going towards V1, so we're getting more positive as we're approaching that lead, we're going to have a positive upstroke, right? So, our first part of V1 is going to look a little like that. We're going to have a little upstroke, okay? However, since the left ventricle is so much bigger than the right ventricle, the left ventricle is going to predominate. It's going to override the right ventricle's depolarization. So since the right ventricle depolarizes first, we have just a little bit of a, what they call an R wave, um, and then the left ventricle depolarizes, so we have a massive downward spike. Now, why would we have a downward spike in V1? Well, remember, when we have a, re or a depolarization going away, from this lead. So the left ventricle's net depolarization and vector is this direction. Since we have a depolarization going away from this electrode, remember it's going to be sad, just like our last video, so it's going to go down. It'll be a negative spike. Um, when it repolarizes, we have the repolarization that goes from the outside inside of muscle. So remember, it starts out here and goes in. So it starts out here and goes in. So since the left ventricle is so much bigger, we're going to have a smaller positive upstroke because of V1. So we would have R, S, comes back up to positive, just like that. That's V1. V6, let's think about V6 now. So since we have a huge vector going towards V6 first, or I guess later, what do you think it's going to look like? So Remember, V1, I'm sorry, on the right side of the ventricle, we have that initial depolarization towards V1 and away from V6. So if it's towards V1 and away from V6, we're going to have a little dip. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about this here. V6, if we have, we're doing our depolarization. So... Since we have a tiny little depolarization away from V1, we'll go down a little bit. V6, and you might not even have a little downstroke here. V6 then, because the left ventricle is going to depolarize towards V6, we will have the positive upstroke. Okay? And then back down. Just like that. That is all that is happening grossly with the heart, with these precordial leads. So let's say we go to V3. Since V3 is almost perpendicular to both of these axes, or these vectors, we're not going to have a very big wave, or it's going to be pretty much biphasic. What you will see, um, where your V3 will look kind of like, let's see, kind of like that, almost biphasic, and that's because, remember, when you have a perpendicular vector, when your electrical activity is moving perpendicular to what that lead is monitoring, you're going to have a really small deflection or it's going to be equally biphasic, um, which means that the top, the distance from here to here is the same. So these peaks are kind of the same height. So your waveform will change as you kind of rotate around from V1 to V6, where you will have a small R wave at first and then your R wave gets bigger here and then it gets even bigger here, okay? That is called R wave progression. That's what you look for when you're looking at these precordial V1 through V6 leads, okay? Uh, that's basically all it is, is it's just measuring all the electrical activity in the heart in the transverse plane. If you understand my first video, then you should clearly be able to understand these videos, or this video here, and the physiologic properties that's going on. Um, I'm going to make another video where we're going to actually go over a couple 12 lead EKG printouts and we'll talk through them, um, but make sure you get this principle down pat. This is all that's happening. Um, so let me actually, I will redraw, we'll do one more, we'll go over one more uh, lead, just 
one more time to make sure we got a good concept of it or good grasp. All right, so here's the spine again, ribs. Here is the sternum down here. This is the left side. This is the right side, okay? Now the heart again. Atriums. And the ventricle. So this is the left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. So remember, right ventricle is facing anteriorly, left ventricle is facing posteriorly. So now we draw our leads, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, okay? V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And these are placed on the skin in a circumferential pattern around the heart. So let's look at, how about let's do V4, okay? So let me erase these up here. Four. Okay, so first thing we have that happens is the heart depolarizes from the SA node and it goes to the AV node and then it travels down the septum through the bundle of His and the Purkinje fibers and it goes up into the muscle. Left ventricle goes to the anterior and posterior fascicular branches and then it depolarizes the muscle. Remember the muscle depolarizes from the inside to the outside, okay, and it repolarizes from the outside to the inside. Okay, so I'll draw repolarization in, let's do it in blue. If I have a blue, there it is. Okay, so repolarization, depolarization inside to outside, repolarization outside to inside. Okay, so if we're looking at V4, it's mainly over here on the left ventricle side. All right, so our initial spike or our initial depolarization. If we look at the axis compared to the right ventricle, the right ventricle is depolarizing away from V4, right? So we would have a small downward spike. The left ventricle is depolarizing towards V4, so we would have a big spike, right? Now granted, this is just, this isn't clinically or irrelevant or anything, because this could look like a Q wave, which is a whole different topic. But for our purposes here, whenever you have a depolarization going away from that electrode, it's going to be a negative spike. When it has a depolarization going towards that electrode, it's a positive spike. When it's repolarization, it's getting more negative. When it repolarizes towards that positive electrode, that's a negative spike. So if we have a repolarization in this direction towards V1, that's going to be negative. Remember, the blue is repolarization. So since we have a repolarization going away from V1, that would be a positive spike. If we have a repolarization over here looking at V6, remember it goes from the outside inside, so that would be a negative spike. So that's what you would see over here. V4, kind of like V3, it's almost biphasic somewhat, but it's getting that foundation of knowing that the depolarization and the repolarization, what they do when they're approaching that lead, will help you get a super easy grip on this topic. So um, if you have any questions about this video, send me an email or a message. Um, I'd be happy to answer them and uh, make any other videos if you guys have any further questions. Be sure to check out the next video that talks about the 12 leads where we actually go over them um, on my computer on a screen capture. So uh, thanks for watching.